Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to this session. Now, we will be as we have discussed in this in the last class that uh, another typical filtration uh, physical phenomena occurring in membrane filtration is gel formation over the membrane surface. Now, in the last class we have seen how the gel is formed over the membrane surface. There are two ways. One, the, the filtration may be op, uh, you know, osmotic pressure controlled initially, later on it can get transitioned into the gel layer controlling phenomena. In a second case, there may be solutes which will be gel forming from the begin very beginning of the process like polyvinyl alcohol, um, uh, pectin and which are known as the well known gel forming agents. So, in the in this class, we will be looking into the various modeling approaches of the gel layer control infiltration. The first one will be looking into the steady state model and this will be same as one dimensional film theory model. that we have considered in the uh, in case of osmotic pressure control filtration. We assume a constant film of thickness delta, constant film of solutes of thickness delta is formed uh, over the membrane surface and it will be having a constant, gel, uh, constant solute concentration within the gel. So, C g is known as the gel layer concentration. And at the steady state, there will be a um, there will there, there will be a constant growth of mass transfer boundary layer over this. So this this will be this will be actually the delta, the mass transfer boundary layer, and this will be the gel thickness. So this is the thickness of mass transfer boundary layer. This is the gel thickness, and we assume that the solute will be suffering a concentration gradient or polarization from the bulk at C naught to gel solution interface that is gel concentration and then the concentration of gel remains same within the gel layer then you will be getting the permeate flux. Now, at the, 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 at the steady state uh, we can write down the solute balance within this mass transfer boundary layer. If you do a if you write a solute balance in mass transfer boundary layer, then we will be getting V w c plus d d c d y will be equal to 0. There is no solute concentration in the permeate stream in this case, because in most of the cases the gel forming material are larger in size, they will be having bigger sizes and the larger molecular weight and typically they will be retained by the membrane surface and the permeate concentration is 0 in most of the cases. So, if you really carry out this you know integral from 0 to delta with the with the variation of concentration from C g to C naught, then you will be getting V w is equal to k l n C g by C naught. So, this is the steady state equation of the permeate flux in the gel polarization case and mass transfer coefficient can be estimated um, depending on the domain of um, uh, the flow domain as well as the uh, um, uh, as, as well as the you know uh, uh, whether it is it will be a laminar flow or turbulent flow and or it whether you will be working with a tubular module or whether it is working with a flat sheet geometry or in you know, a hollow fiber module. So, depending on the module as well as the flow domain mass transfer coefficient will be evaluated whether it is a start cell um, uh, whether in a start cell are less than th Reynolds number less than 32000 above 32000 all those correlations we have already of correlations of mass transfer coefficient we have already discussed earlier those are coming from the heat and mass transfer analogy will be valid and uh, depending on the flow domain and the flow geometry 
one will be estimating the mass transfer coefficient. Once the mass transfer coefficient will be estimated, the gel layer concentration, if the gel layer concentration is known to you, then one can estimate the permeate flux at the steady state. Now, let us look into the, uh, uh, so what is the typical parameter in this case? The typical parameter in this case is the gel layer concentration, how to evaluate the gel layer concentration. So, it is very easy to evaluate the gel layer concentration. The governing equation for calculating or estimating the gel layer concentration C g is this steady state equation. So, we conduct the experiment at different concentration of the feed solute and then measure the permeate flux at a particular k, k means at a particular turbulence. So, we plot then V w versus feed concentration in a log scale this will be a log scale ln c naught and then we will be seeing that permeate flux will be decreasing as the feed concentration increases. So, it will be a straight line and we, we extrapolate this line and where it cuts the gel layer uh, in, in uh, y equal to uh, where it cuts the x axis that concentration is the gel layer concentration. So, when C naught is equal to C g l n 1 will be equal to 0. So, you will be getting the 0 value of flux there, but in the in the in an actual experiment you will be always getting some value of finite value of flux. So, therefore, uh, this line will be extrapolated and you will be getting the gel layer concentration. If you operate if you conduct the same set of experiment with another value of turbulence or the mass transfer coefficient then your you uh, will be getting another. So, but if we extrapolate that will be boiled down into the same value um, of C g. So, that is how the gel layer concentration can be can be obtained experimentally and this parameter can be estimated. So, once you, you estimate the parameter the gel layer concentration can be put you know the unknown value of uh, for, for, a, for a known value of C naught then you will be getting the value of permeate flux knowing the estimating the mass transfer coefficient. But remember in case of gel layer control filtration controlling case C g must be very very high and sometimes C g is around uh, may be as high as 150 times to 200 times of C naught. That means, in a gel layer control filtration the concentration suffers maximum from the in the within the mass transfer boundary layer from C naught to C g and sometimes C g can be as high as 150 times to 200 times of feed bulk concentration. Therefore, variation of th of the transport coefficients will be extremely high in case of gel layer control filtration compared to the osmotic pressure control filtration. So, uh, and as we have discussed there are three major parameters which will be appearing in your system are uh, the transport coefficients one is the density, viscosity and diffusivity. Density is the weakest function of concentration, diffusivity is a little bit stronger, viscosity is the strongest function of concentration and typically viscosity varies exponentially with concentration. So, therefore, correction by sedated correction factor is very, very important in case of the gel layer control filtration and one can get a correction factor something like this 1.85. Reynold Smith D by L for the laminar flow in a rectangular channel Smith at bulk divided by Smith at the wall. So, raised to the power 0 0.27 what is uh, 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 sometimes this Smith number ratio can be approximated as mu at bulk divided by mu at wall because the if, if variation of diffusivity and density are minimal then it will be major mainly the variation of viscosity. A mu at bulk means mu is evaluated at bulk concentration that is C bulk or C naught as we have discussed C naught is the bulk concentration in this case and mu at wall will be nothing but mu evaluated at gel layer concentration. Then as we have discussed earlier that since this value is uh, viscosity is increasing with concentration and C g l is always greater than C naught the denominator will be denominator will be always greater than numerator and it will be it will be basically under it will be basically the uh, value of mass transfer coefficient will be decreased because of the 
variation of the properties in the mass transfer boundary layer. Hence, one has to invoke the suggested correction factor in order to estimate mass transfer coefficient in case of gel layer control filtration, because here the visco the concentration variation is the maximum, therefore leading to the maximum variation of the phys thermophysical or you know transport coefficients or transport properties. So, this is a must in case of a this correction factor is a must in case of a gel layer control filtration compared to the osmotic pressure control filtration. Now, next we will be looking into a most likely gel polarized filtration case. filtration. So, what is that? Uh, we will be having a membrane there is a formation of gel over it and over there there will be formation of mass transfer boundary layer because of the external flow. So, C is equal to C naught here, C is equal to C g here and C g remains same in the gel layer and if you put your axis at y equal to 0, this will be y is equal to delta, where delta is the thickness of the mass transfer boundary layer and then this will be y is equal to delta plus L, where L is the thickness of gel layer at any point of time and then you will be getting a permeate flux. As time progresses, this gel layer grows in, uh, grows in the y direction and your thickness which will be essentially a function of time. So, therefore, this thickness L it increases with time. So, if you look into the value, so uh, you know variation the gel layer thickness grows with time and then it will be reaching a steady state probably because of the you know existence of external flow and as you have seen that there will be two resistance, uh, there will be three resistance acting in tandem in this case. One is the mass transfer boundary layer resistance, mass transfer resistance, another is the gel layer resistance and is the membrane resistance. So, these three resistance are acting in tandem here and since the gel layer resistance is increasing as a function of time your uh, and this, this uh, membrane resistance will be remaining constant and mass transfer boundary layer will also be remaining in constant and then you will be getting a constant decrease in permeate flux. So, this is how the permeate flux varying with time, this is how the gel grows in time when gel layer thickness becomes constant steady state permeate flux also becomes steady state. So, we are talking about a system where it is a moving boundary because L is growing as a function of time the value of L is increasing. So, it the boundary is moving we, we are talking about a moving boundary system. So, now we write down the mass balance equation between uh, within the mass transfer boundary layer. So, solute balance equation we write. So, this becomes rho g d l d t this is the accumulation term is equal to V w c minus d d c d y and the boundary condition it should satisfy is that at y equal to 0 c is equal to c naught and we evaluate at y equal to delta c is equal to c g. So, within these two boundaries we evaluate this and if you look into this type of equa this equation now here L is a sole function of time sole function of t. So, L is a sole function of time and uh, C is a function of y alone. So, because C is the concentration that is solid concentration that is occurring in the mass transfer boundary layer and mass transfer boundary layer is entirely depending on the hydrodynamics of the system. So, I can take this I can do this integration over y keeping uh, left hand side as constant. So, this can be treated as constant. So, therefore, if you if you can identify this equation this is a this is a first first order ordinary differential equation, but it is a not homogeneous it is a non homogeneous homogeneous first order ordinary differential equation and the non homogeneity term is basically this term rho g d l d t which will be treated as constant during the integration over y. So, if you really uh, you know carry out this integration then ultimately you will be getting rho g d l d t 
is equal to VW CG minus C naught exponential VW by K 1 minus exponential VW by K. Now, if you look into the uh, steady state, so uh, uh, steady state solution the at the steady state d l d 2 will be 0 and you will be getting back your steady state solution v w equal to k l n c g by c naught. So, this will be the governing equation of the transient uh, uh, you know uh, transient uh, uh, value of the uh, gel layer thickness as well as the permeate flux. Now, if you look into the uh, expression of permeate flux as a resist from the phenomenological uh, point of view, this will be nothing but the uh, driving force divided by the resistance. So, there will be two resistances R m plus R g, uh, the gel layer resistance and membrane resistance and the mass transfer resistance is already taken care of in the, uh, uh, in the mass transfer coefficient. So, what is R g? R g is known as the gel layer resistance and what is gel layer resistance? This will be nothing but alpha into 1 minus epsilon g rho g times L. What is alpha? Alpha is called as the known as the specific gel layer resistance. It is a gel characteristic is known as the specific gel layer resistance. as a unit meter per kg. Uh, epsilon g is the gel layer porosity, rho g is gel layer density, typically this will be uh, this gel layer density will be slightly higher than the water density typically around 1 0 1 5 1100 1050 kg per meter cube like that and L is the gel layer thickness which will be essentially a function of time. So, therefore, since L is a function of time rest are all gel characteristics V w uh, this R g will be a function of time. Since L is an increasing function of time R g will be also increasing function of time leading to decrease in permeate flux as a function of operation. So, what is alpha? Alpha is specific gel layer resistance. and this will be obtained from the Kozni Karman equation as 180 1 minus epsilon g divided by epsilon g cube rho g d p square. So, this comes from Kozni Karman equation classical filtration theory. So, what is rho g is the gel uh, gel layer resist gel layer density, epsilon is the gel porosity, d p is the diameter of gel forming particles Sometimes we are talking about the filtration of the polyvinyl alcohol, the, uh, the polymers. Sometimes we are talking about the filtration of the fruit juice involving pectin, but these polysaccharides of polymers, they will be basically, uh, they will not be forming the hard spheres having a definite particle diameter d p. So, they will be forming a very viscous network over the membrane surface forming which will be, um, uh, which will be calling, we will be calling as gel. Now, d p means it will be the gel layer it, that means it will be forming a gel layer which will be equivalent to the resistance offering by particles of average diameter d p. The it will be interpreted that way the Kozni Karma, Karma specific gel layer resistance will be interpreted like that that although you may not be having exactly de well defined particles of diameter d p it will be the resistance that will be offered by the polysaccharides or polymers which will be a natural gel forming agent uh, compared uh, which will be. Uh, so, basically they will be offering a gel layer resistance which will be equivalent to a particle having a diameter 
equivalent diameter dp. So, that will be the interpretation of the uh, specific gel layer resistance. So, now, if you look into the governing equation, we have the governing equation of gel layer thickness rho g d l d t is equal to v w c g minus c naught exponential v w by k divided by 1 minus exponential v w by k and d l uh, and, and v w is equal to delta p by mu r m plus r g, r g is alpha 1 minus epsilon g rho g times l, where l is a function of time and the governing equation of l is here and this equation has to be solved at l is equal to uh, at, at t equal to 0, l is equal to 0. That means, at the starting there is no gel layer thickness. So, this is an ordinary uh, differential equation, but this cannot be solved uh, you know uh, this is not, not not linear this cannot be because v w will be essentially is appearing on the right hand side there are three spare places and v w will be essentially a function of l. So, you will be getting an ordinary differential equation d l d t with a initial condition t equal to 0 l equal to 0. So, one can take recourse to the runge kutta 4 method. to solve this equation um, as a function of time. So, after solution you will be getting L as a function of time, once you L get, a, L get L as a function of time insert here. So, you will be getting the permeate flux profile as a function of time. So, this is how the gel layer control um, uh, filtration will be, uh, will, will be modeled in an actual scenario. But if you, if you have must have understood that there are several parameters those are appearing in the gel layer controlling filtrations. Next, what we will be looking into this how to estimate these parameters. Once these parameters are estimated, then only I will be able to solve the governing equation for the gel layer controlling filtration. Now, let us look into the how various parameters are estimated. Now, first we let us list down the what are the parameters those are appearing in the gel layer model. One is the gel concentration and we have already seen how the gel concentration is estimated and sp specific gel layer resistance alpha epsilon g d p epsilon is the gel porosity d p is the gel forming particle and rho g is the gel layer density. So, let us find out how the estimation estimation of gel layer concentration we have already done. Now, let us look into the how to estimate the specific gel layer resistance. alpha. So, for that we have to conduct experiment conduct a separate experiment in a batch cell. Batch cell and we derive uh, we develop a theory for you know permeate flux profile how to obtain in a batch cell and then we will see how the uh, you know um, uh, specific gel layer resistance can be estimated quite easily by conducting a separate set of experiment in the batch cell. Okay. So, in a batch cell if you write the expression of V w permeate flux it will be nothing but 1 over a d v d t, where a is the membrane area or filtration area, v is the cumulative cumulative permeate volume so we can write 1 over a dv dt is equal to delta p divided by mu rm plus rg so this is also known as the series resist series model mm, uh, so uh, two resistances are acting in series so 1 by a d v d t will be is equal to delta p by mu. I take r m outside. So, this becomes non dimensional r g and what is v w naught? It is pure water flux 
that is nothing but delta p by mu r m. Okay. So, because uh, if there is no solution only pure water, there is no osmotic pressure, there is no gel layer resistance nothing. So, you will be getting in delta p by mu r m or L p delta p. So, that is a pure water flux. So, we can write the uh, d v d t 1 over 1, 1 over a d v d t is equal to v w naught divided by 1 plus r g by r m. So, next we write down a solute mass balance solute mass balance in gel layer. If we really do that, this becomes L A 1 minus epsilon g rho g times C naught times V. V is the cumulative volume of the filtrate. So, at a particular time, this much volume has been uh, filtered out. So, that will be carrying C naught concentration of the solute. So, total mass that will be deposited as a gel is C naught times V. So, in terms of the gel gel properties, it will be gel layer thickness multiplied by area of cross section that will be a gel layer volume multiplied by 1 minus epsilon g that will be the actual material that is there in the gel layer multiplied by gel layer density which is the amount of gel that is presented. So, we can write R g, R g is basically as we have written earlier R g is alpha 1 minus epsilon g rho g times L. So, by combining these two we can get R g is equal to alpha C naught B by A. So, once we get that we can write the governing equation of cumulative volume as 1 over A d v d t is equal to v w naught divided by 1 plus alpha C naught by A r m times V. Okay. So, uh, we, we take it on the other side and do the integration. So, it will be 1 plus alpha C naught divided by A r m times V d V is equal to V w naught A d T. This will be integrated from 0 to T and this will be integrated on the left hand side from 0 to V. So, let us write down what we get after the integration. After the integration, we will be getting V plus alpha C naught divided by 2 A R m times V square A V w naught d t and then we do a you know rearrangement to make it linear form of equation T by V is equal to 1 over A V w naught plus alpha C naught divided by 2 a square V w naught R m times V. Then what we do? We measured the cumulative volume, we conduct an experiment, batch cell experiment and measure cumulative volume as a function of time and then plot T by V as a function of V. So, it is y equal to m x plus c. So, you will be getting value this is for this for a particular delta p. Okay. So, from the intercept we will be getting 1 over a v w naught that we can verify and from the slope we can get alpha c naught divided by 2 a square v w naught r m. So, if you remember that C naught is known to us that is a fit concentration, membrane resistance is known to us, V w naught is known to us that is delta p by mu r m. So, that is also known to us, area is the membrane resistance, membrane area. So, membrane filtration area so that will be known to us. So, we know everything in this case slope we have determined. So, we will be getting the value of alpha. So, alpha is determined from the slope. Now, we conduct the experiments for different pressure drop and then carry out the and estimate the value of alpha, then put a correlation of alpha is equal to alpha naught delta p to the power n. So, if n is equal to 0, then the cake or gel is not compressible, it is incompressible. n is equal to 0, incompressible 
cake or gel okay otherwise the gel is compressible and uh, typically the value of n is less than 1 generally okay it is compressible so it gets compressed its epsilon g or the porosity decreases as we increase the uh, transmembrane pressure drop so this is how the parameter specific gel layer resistance is estimated as in case of gel forming um, gel gel control infiltration in the next class we will looking into the estimation of gel layer porosity gel layer uh, and particle size equivalent particle diameter for a typical you know polymeric or polysaccharide gel and gel density then that will completely then that will completely wind up the filtration of the gel controlling uh, membrane separation system thank you very much